OSHA's lockout tagout standard helps ensure safety on and around powered equipment. This OSHA standard identifies three classifications that determine to what extent employees are affected by lockout tagout requirements. Authorized employees are the ones who lock or implement a tagout system procedure on equipment for servicing or maintenance. Authorized employees must have thorough knowledge of the machines they work on and the lockout tagout requirements that go with them. The affected employee is one whose job requires them to operate or utilize equipment and understand lockout tagout requirements to avoid hazards for maintenance personnel. Other employees are those whose work may require them to be in the areas where energy control procedures exist. They are not directly responsible for operating or performing maintenance on equipment. Lockout is the preferred method of control and provides the greatest degree of protection for the employee working on the machine. If work is required on equipment that will not accept lockout devices, tagout is permitted. All lockout tagout procedures must be followed even if no one is in the work area when the work begins. Many times employees enter the work area after maintenance procedures have begun, and lockout tagout procedures ensure that these employees do not accidentally energize the machine. The fundamental rules that everybody must understand about general energy control procedures are that all equipment must be locked out or tagged out to protect against accidental or inadvertent operation, and that no one should attempt to operate any switch, valve, or other device that is locked out or tagged out. To perform a lockout or tagout under the general energy control procedures, one, notify all affected employees. Two, deactivate the equipment to be serviced using normal shutdown procedures. Three, isolate the equipment from its energy source. Four, lock out or tag out all energy isolating devices on the equipment. Five, if the maintenance procedure involves more than one person, each person must place a personal lockout or tag out device on the energy isolating device. For multiple locks, a multiple hold hasp must be used. Six, make sure all personnel are not exposed to potential injury from the equipment. Seven, check the zero energy state of the equipment by attempting to operate the equipment to ensure that it will not operate. Return all controls to neutral or off after trying to operate the equipment. When the service or maintenance job is done and prior to starting the machine, employees must first remove all tools and reinstall machine guards. Check the area around the equipment so that no one is in an exposed area. Remove all lockout tagout devices and operate the energy isolating devices to restore energy to the equipment. Specific energy control procedures affect most equipment used in die casting operations. They include identity and description of each item of machinery or equipment, the listing and description of controls and sources of energy, shutdown procedures in a step by step manner, and procedures for releasing the machine from lockout or tagout and for starting up the equipment must be provided. Training on lockout tagout procedures vary according to employee classification. Authorized employees must be able to recognize hazardous energy sources and the type and magnitude of energy at the job site and how to isolate and control them. Affected employees must understand the purpose and the use of energy control procedures or equipment they operate or where the energy source is located in their work area. Other employees should also be trained on energy control procedures for equipment they operate and be prohibited from restarting equipment that is locked or tagged out.